today back on the 92 Ford F-150. I mentioned it in the last video on the uh, treasure hunt video where I wanted to take the seats out of this and kind of make them into a man cave type uh, bench or couch or whatever you want to call it. So that's what we're going to do in this video. It's a little different, but hey, should still be interesting. Maybe give you some ideas on what you can do in your place. All right, got my tools. Most importantly, got my impact. Try to remove the rear bolts first. Well, I gotta get the right size, because that ain't gonna work. Oddly enough, my impact set just doesn't come with it. I'll be back. All right, and we're back. Let's try this again. Oh boy, it's not looking good. All right, let's try this one here, see what we get. I have no idea. Let me check this out again. Well, I got that one out there. It was the right size. I'm trying to do this quickly because it is kind of cold and my nose is getting snotty. It's kind of annoying. Anyway, that one came out. I had the right size. Worked fine. I don't know what's going on with these two back ones. Maybe they're jammed. This one here is a different size. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do this one quite easily, but Give it a try anyway, because it's a bolt going through with a nut on the top here. Oh, it worked. Let's retry those ones. Well, that sucks. I just sh shaved my socket. It was a 12 point, now it's a zero point. All right, Whew. out of breath trying to get some tools. You know, when one tool fails, you get another one. And by the time you're done, you got your whole toolbox with you. All right, got that one loose. It's not quite out yet. Let me move on to the other one. Good tool for this. Whew. That one's loose. I'm gonna switch to a ratchet now. I was using a breaker bar. Now, ah oh man, this body is so rusted. The, the bolt is just spinning there and I can't do anything with it right now. I'm gonna try and cut some of this vinyl out. Maybe I can pull it through, I have no idea. I found a body. I'm gonna show you in a minute. Let me just get these seat belts out. Yep, it's a rat. That's what was under the seat. It's pretty well preserved. All right, took a second and I wrestled with the seat. The back is still attached because of the frame. But now the bloody steering wheel is getting in my way. So I'm gonna try and take that off. You know, I thought I was just gonna take a seat out today, but you know, somebody had some other plans for me. It's also taking way longer than I was anticipating. Ugh, there's always something. All right, wrestling with the seat and I was using the uh, cutoff wheel. I didn't want to film because I, I don't have my camera that I don't care about, but as you can see here, I mean, there's a plate here. There's two other bolts on the other side. I managed to cut them and then at least try and, you know, break this seat free. I'm hoping with some muscle, if I still have any left, I can break the other side free. So let me see what I can do. bit of strength that I have finally broken free I had to cut it again but it came out Whew. now I just gotta 
Pull it out. Uh, it's gonna snag on something, it's gonna snag on everything. Ah! Those are the remains, that's what's left over. There's still that seat back there, but I am gonna leave that for another day. And this is the final product. Ugh. Something that I thought was going to be simple, you know. Four bolts. Uh, turned into a bring the toolbox. Let me show you the underside. Overall, the passenger side, pretty good shape. And then under the driver's side where that rat made its home, it seems to have made two little pockets here. I am wondering if I can go to one of those fabric stores and get some foam and just jam that in there or whatever. I'll see what I can do. But overall, it's okay. Some of the vinyl is cracked and all that, but... You know, maybe I'll get a get a new seat cover for it. And this here is a plate that I was talking about that had like four extra screws, bolts stuck in there. And I cut the heads off and got it loose. But this was just spinning there freely. Anyway, it's out now. I gotta get into building the frame for it and then seeing what we can do after that. All right guys, I'm in the uh, cabin shop now, uh, which honestly was an old cabin. Uh, I was using it for storage, but I'm kind of cleaning it up. Anyway. Um, you're going to hear a generator, I can't get away from that, so just bear with me. But what I'm going to try and start off with is just try and take these uh, sliders off and then take a couple of measurements. I was originally just going to make like a full crazy frame, but this bench actually has pretty good support uh, in it. So I'm just going to make a bracket that goes here and then kind of a, a little square and then an actual like floor plate. So that way uh, we can get it to be stable and so it doesn't rock. So let me get to taking these off. Alright, so I got the tracks off, which is pretty good. There's that piece that I had issues with when I was trying to pull it out. And that's what I had to cut the uh, grooves that were holding it in. So that's good, these are done. And then there's the original brackets that are on there, or at least a frame for the seat. That's what I was saying, these are pretty solid. There's, there's a bar that runs across here and back here. So really what happens is that this whole piece supports itself, which is great. It means less welding, less pieces that I have to cut from. And I will be reusing these holes. I think they're, they're perfect. The screws are perfect. They're not busted out, rusted, and totally bad. And this here is the steel that I'll be using. It's, I think it's an eighth inch thick. It's, it's a little overkill, but it's what I got. And uh, I would rather get rid of these than go out and buy some new stuff. So let me go ahead and take some measurements and make some cuts. You know pretty much uh, a third of the way there so what I did is I figured out kind of the maximum height that I wanted this is the cushions uncompressed and I found that from the floor to the top of the seat or the foam pad it was I, I was gonna go with 18 inches it's kind of the general um, area that I was seeing some other things that I had so 18 inches don't forget that the foam will compress 
Uh, once you sit on it, probably about two inches. That's what I'm figuring based again on some of the stuff that I have. So 18 inches was the height. Made all the pieces accordingly for the height. Obviously reducing the thickness of the seat. Like these aren't in 18 inches long. They're 18 inches minus the thickness of the frame and the cushion and all that. So we'll see how that works. Uh, the back ones, because these are the front ones here. The back ones, I shrunk them two inches to give you that feeling like you're you're in the seat rather than just being on the seat. Just to, to give you that feeling of like being like pushed in so that way you don't have to feel like you're falling out. Uh, these are for the actual seat uh, frame rails. And this is the back one. This is the one that's gonna be on the floor. I made this uh, six extra uh, inches long because I wanted it to uh, be a little bit stable. Like a couch leans, right? So I didn't want somebody to get into the seat and then all of a sudden feel like they're gonna fall back. So this is just um, basically a little extra spacer so that way it doesn't give you the feeling of falling. And then these are the frame on the floor across the entire seat. And this is what's gonna hold and brace the bottom part on the floor. Now I got a bad one here. Well, I say bad one, but whatever, it still works. Uh, that's curved. I'm just gonna keep that one for the back to make sure it looks nice. So I'm gonna prep these, grind them, and get them ready for welding. grinded everything and kind of set it up uh, at least this corner in the jig but for the most part all I did was just clean the edges I didn't really do anything fancy or try to make a nice super straight edge it doesn't really matter at this point the only thing extra that I did do is I, I turned these into 45s because this is going to be the base that sits on the floor and I wanted a, a really nice flush flat edge um, just to just to look nice, really. That's pretty much the only really reason that I, I did that. Um, I went ahead and checked to make sure this was square, but I'm gonna check it again before I weld and then go from there. base welded pretty happy with it my flux core welding is getting better which is great at least on the flat horizontal uh, level vertically it still needs a little bit of work but it's not bad anyway all four corners kind of look like that so it's pretty good and here's on the inside too 
So this part, this part is the back piece, which is why I welded straight up there and all across there, uh, because I'm not putting a corner piece here. So the front part where I am putting a corner piece, all I did is I just welded maybe about a half inch, three quarters of an inch here, and I didn't weld in that space there. So there, as you can see, I still see a little bit of light there, so it looks like I might have to go back and just do a little touch up, but either way, it's still good. I'm gonna go ahead and grind and clean this and get it ready for welding the base of the seat. in all its glory. Now admittedly, as you saw, I, I pretty much welded quite a bit on this thing. Uh, honestly, over welded it, but at least this way I know that I can feel comfortable, uh, you know, jumping on the couch, so to speak. I know that it's not just gonna back off. Now, I, I know that angle is probably a little bit steeper than I would have wanted, but um, I'm gonna leave it like that. I figure worst case is that I can, oh, that's still hot. Uh, I can still put a few washers in here just to bring it up or something like that. Um, but so far so good, at least it'll allow for some adjustability. Now I still have to grind it and prep it for paint. Um, I haven't really chosen the paint. I think I'm, I'm probably just gonna go with black, but uh, we'll see, maybe I'll get inspired when I get to the store and buy some paint. But at this point, just grind it, prep it for paint, clean it, and uh, get that part done. I still have to, oh wait. <laughs> Yeah, I still have to drill the holes for the um, for the bench, and I'll have to take my measurements actually before I do any of that. Make sure everything is good. Head stuck in an ogre's butt.
Well, that just happened. So pro tip here, guys, undo the back cushions and clean them out. Well, she's finally done. Uh, I wasn't expecting that much of a mouse mess uh, <laughs> in the back seat. I think that was pretty pretty intense. It really honestly did not look like there was that much junk in there. Uh, but once I started cleaning it and feeling, there was there was a little bit of a hump in there. Um, I thought I had vacuumed it out, but it wasn't the case. So that's why I pulled basically the whole casing off and then just vacuumed it, uh, sprayed it, and then put it all back together. So that, that was kind of my steps, basically. I, I just vacuumed everything, made sure that was clean, and that there was no particles and stuff like that. And then I first sprayed it with this Febreze antibacterial, uh, just to try and eliminate some odors and, you know, get rid of some junk that might be on, at least on the surface. Uh, when I took that backseat uh, rest out, I, like, sprayed the whole thing with it and kind of uh, wiped it down just to make sure everything was good. The other thing that I used was this, this Armor All carpet and upholstery cleaner. It works pretty good. Um, I don't, I can't say that I would really have any issues. The only issues I would say uh, would be that it doesn't really get any stains out, but honestly, it doesn't say anywhere that that's what it does. So really this is uh, just meant to be used for light duty stuff. The brush is all right. I didn't find that it foamed that much either, but again, maybe not a big deal uh, if you have some light stuff to do. Same, same with the Febreze. This, this wasn't like a permanent, like super strong uh, thing. This was really for light duty. So light duty and light duty. Uh, these two products weren't necessarily bad. They were just not meant for this amount of grime and dirt. The other thing that I used, and I actually really like this product. I, I've used it on other things, but this Mother's VLR vinyl leather and rubber cleaner. Uh, it, it works pretty good. Uh, depending on the product that you're using, you might have to do multiple coats. Um, but I just did a little bit shot on the back. Basically, you know, one of those things where if I can make it last just a month longer, then great. And that way, if it doesn't rip, it's all right. For now, I'm just going to kind of let it bake in the sun and kind of dry off a little bit. And then once that's done, I'll just bring it, bring it inside and, and enjoy it. Maybe put a blank on it to kind of make it look cleaner and uh, use it. I think this is kind of neat. Uh, it's always fun to make these things. I always enjoy this kind of stuff and then when you get to use it it's pretty rewarding. So as you can see the the only thing I didn't do is paint it. I didn't paint it because the weather here has not really been accommodating. Um, it's a little bit warm today but still too cold for me to put some spray paint. So I'm just basically leaving it. It's got this industrial look. The uh, rust colored primer looks pretty good with the bench. So uh, I'm going to leave it like that for now. Uh, I have chosen my color but actually I might even change my mind. Uh, so I'm going to leave that for another video. Maybe just a little choose a quickie or something like that just to kind of update you on all of this well guys i think this video has gone on long enough so i'm going to actually cut it here i did a lot of time lapse stuff i don't know if that's uh you know your thing or if you just want me to put snippets but either way i'll see how this does if you actually really don't like it feel free to leave that in the comments really have no issues with that but again i, I said it before i enjoyed this making this project it's fun to build something and then to go ahead and use it it's pretty rewarding uh, highly recommend it. Go out, go do something. It's really satisfying at the end of the day. Oh, hang on before we go. I forgot to mention a couple of things. Man, that sun is bright. Sorry. Uh, having a hard time seeing. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, I wanted to mention that extra space that I added on the bottom piece, like that extra six inches, the real six inches of length, uh, really did help it to prevent it from actually falling backwards when you sat on it. It's actually really just right. It doesn't extend too far past the actual back of the couch, if you will and uh, keeps it stable. The one thing I would say is maybe the height I did just a little bit too much. Um, I originally chose 18 inches, but that was with the expectation of the foam compressing a bit more and it didn't compress as much as I thought it, it would. So I would have probably uh, been better or uh, you know okay with dropping it even an inch or two more. However, for me, it's not too bad, but for a short person, yeah, their feet are gonna dangle. But either way, maybe that's okay. Other than that, it's actually pretty comfortable uh, and I don't have any issues with it I the only issue I would say is maybe just take the headrests off they actually don't really serve a purpose and you don't tend to sit on it the same way as you would in a car or truck but with that I'm just gonna say this thank you for watching I really do appreciate it and take it easy